All right, so in this video, we will be discussing personal versus business accounts. Now, if you already have a business account, then feel free to skip over this section and start with the Instagram bios, which starts at five minutes and 45 seconds. But if you do not have a business account, then stick around because trust me, you need one. Now, what is the difference between a personal versus business account on Instagram? Personal Instagram accounts let you post the same you know, great photos as in Instagram business accounts does, but a business account comes with more premium features, which means more ways for your potential clients or customers to book or buy from you. Switching over to a business account gives you access to analytics, which is crucial in digital marketing. These stats tell you which posts are working or not working, which will help you understand your audience better which means you can keep track over the services and products your audience actually wants to book or buy from you. It's a really good feature to utilize on a daily basis because it gives you additional insight, which is very beneficial for you because then you will know how many accounts are being reached from your post, how many of them are already following you, which views come from your hashtags, um, and hashtags are very, very uh, good to utilize. Best times to post, your target audience, um, what cities your content is being seen in, and your top location in your analytics should be your city, okay? So the city that you live in, that should be the top location. If you also travel to braid hair, then you um, should also have those locations right underneath your top location since those will be the cities that you will be servicing out of as well but again wherever you live and that's where you're going to be doing here the most that should be your very top location where all of your post is being seen the most and that got a lot to do with hashtags okay which we will discuss that in a later module all right so with Promoting or boosting a post, that option is only available for business accounts. Now, me personally, I have, you know, tried the promoting my post, but honestly, I feel like they only work if you are willing to spend a large amount on promoting your post. So if you are not ready to spend money at the moment, don't stress yourself out about it. You can still grow organically, but boosting your posts, it does help you um, get your content out there to new accounts much faster, okay? But again, educate yourself more on how to boost a post before actually boosting a post, okay? If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. All right, so here are two profile examples of mine. And as you can see, my personal account on the left side only displays bios, highlights, and content. That's it. Versus the profile on the right displays my bio, highlights, contact, and booking info. I wanted a more professional feel, so I had a theme going on because I want my potential clients, once they land on my page, I want them to see my work. I want them to see how I'm set up to let them know I'm more on the professional side, and I want them to hit that book button. Okay, so that is the goal is to get those clients to hit that book button. Now, of course, you can set your Instagram up however you like. You could be fun and bubbly. You can have neon colors. You can have uh, dark colors. Whatever it is, it's your brand, and you're going to be able to design it the way you want and create the feel that you want each and every one of your potential, you know, dream clients to get once they land on your page. So now... The question is, should you switch over to a business profile? And me personally, I feel like this. If you are truly trying to grow your clientele, the answer should be yes. And switching over to a business profile is easy and fast to do. Now, you do have to have a Facebook business account set up in order to um, switch over to an Instagram business account. And you don't have to really be active on the Facebook account unless, of course, you want to. So pause this video and head over to Facebook and create you a business account. Then once that is done, come back to this video 
and continue to watch it so I can show you how to set up your Instagram business account. Okay. All right. So now that you're back, that means you set up you a Facebook business account and all you have to do now is do these three simple steps and now you have switched over to an Instagram business account. Easy peasy, okay? But very beneficial. Like, it is so beneficial. Because now you can start keeping track over your insights and learning what your audience like and don't like. And there are more benefits to having a business profile, but we will get into that later on in the module. All right? So, here we are at the Instagram bios. And in this video, we'll be learning how to create an impressive bio because your bio matters. Like that is very, very important. So when potential clients or followers land on your page, you want to let them know exactly who you are and what it is that you do. Think of your bio like a digital business card. So here I put together a few examples of impressive versus weak bios from across the gram. And as you know, your first impression is your last impression. So let's make your first impression count. But first, let's start off with weak bios. Both of these accounts are similar and considered weak bios. As you can see, their name section does not even state what they specialize in nor sell, if they sell anything, which will make their account hard to be found when potential clients use the search engine. So yes, the name section in your bio is searchable, just like a hashtag. And as you see, the one on the left, she uses profanity. And that is so unprofessional. That is an absolute no-no, okay? So unprofessional. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I do cuss from time to time. But I leave, you know, that language for my live streams or like my choice of music. But you will never catch me using profanity in my bio. You may even catch me using profanity in my captions but never in my bio section. And neither one of these accounts have a booking system, which means if I was a client, I'm going to have to text her and then wait for a response with pricing info, dates and times, which makes this booking process longer than it actually needs to be. And we will be discussing the pros and cons of booking systems later on in this video. So now we are going to take a look at impressive bios. I chose two different stylist profiles that works in two different cities, which one having a lower amount of followers and the other having a higher amount of followers, just to show you that the system of the bio works. So as you can see, both accounts have almost the same information, but they listed their information in a creative way. They both use emojis, which is optional, by the way. Emojis are just cute and fun, which can express your personality. Emojis can also be a great way to include your brand colors into your bio section. So impressive bios. As you can see, both accounts states what she specialize in and or offer. So when potential clients hashtag the service or product they are looking for in that particular city, guess what? These two stylists profiles will pop up. And as you notice, both of these stylists state their location. So when potential clients go to look for a stylist in their area, guess what? These two profiles will pop up. And they also state other businesses that they are involved with, just in case the potential client want to book with them or even shop with them on their other accounts. They also state how to book with them, which makes life easier on both ends. They also state how to pay um, for their services, making it easy for people to pay them. Because that's another thing. You must make it easy for your clients to pay you, okay? And they also have a booking site, okay? Well, a booking link, my bad. Making it easy for clients to book with them any time of the day or night. Which is great because even while you are asleep, your potential client can book the look with you without having to wait for you to DM them back 
or you know you're just cutting out the middleman with the book insights so I absolutely love these two ladies profile because they get straight to the point on what they do how to book with them and how you can pay them so just keep all these things in mind when creating your bio because the goal is to turn potential clients into paying customers so now that you have seen examples of weak versus impressive bios, let's create an impressive bio for your dream clients. Here's a formula I like to use called, what are your five red apples? What do you specialize in? Have you won any awards, been featured in any magazines, etc.? Do they need a deposit? Are DMs allowed or not allowed? Which, me personally, I wouldn't put that DMs are not allowed because it goes down in the DMs. I know it goes down in mine, okay? So that I'm just throwing that out there. And other businesses you own, like your website, and then also include your website link. Uh, if you do YouTube, include your YouTube link if you like. Locations need to be in your bio section somewhere. So your clients are not guessing where you are located. Now, if you need more inspiration on figuring out your five red apples, then do a little research by looking at other people's bios. It doesn't have to be just stylist profiles. It can be any type of business profile. Doing this will help you figure out what you should be saying in your bio. All right, so let's move on to online booking. And here we will be discussing the pros and cons of having a booking system available for your clients and why it is important to have it for yourself. We will also be going over which booking system to choose that will work best for your business because the goal is to work smarter and not harder. So let's begin with the advantages of having a booking system. All right, so once you provide a booking system for your clients, your business will be open around the clock. So that means while you are working or even sleeping, you are still getting booked. You can maximize bookings, meaning you can manage your time better so you're not overbooking yourself. You're not tied to your phone 24-7. This to me is the most important of them all because we as stylists or braiders already have enough on our plates throughout the day with work, being a wife, being a mother. So to be tied to your phone after work is a bit overwhelming, okay? Also with your booking site, it is very easy to manage your calendar. You can also accept deposits with a lot of the booking sites, but not all of them. And appointment reminders and text message emails are sent out to every client that sets an appointment with you, which is very helpful for you and the client. It saves you time and the hassle of sending out texts and allows the client to have their hair appointment information the day of, the day before. So they do not forget and become a no-show, okay? And speaking of no-show, you have the option to charge a no-show fee or a cancellation fee if you choose. You also get valuable insights about your business. Like for example, you will be able to get insights on which one of your services are being booked the most, uh, times and dates that you get booked the most, and a few of the sites does help you upsell, which is great, okay? Now the disadvantages, okay, because not all booking systems are created equal, So some of the systems don't have the same features as the next. So make sure to compare these sites with one another before choosing one. And they do have monthly costs, but personally, it is money well spent. Now the sites, the cost between the sites, it varies with all of these sites I am going to be giving you. So sign up with the site that suits your business needs. You can always switch over in the future. Avoid booking systems that don't bring you new quality customers because the goal is to pay these booking systems to do some digital marketing for you automatically, which works in your favor because sending out reminders or last minute availability emails helps you helps your books stay full, okay? And also avoid the booking sites that has a lot of systematic glitches and problems. 
If you choose a site that is having problems with loading issues or booking glitches for you and or your clients, then don't hesitate to take your business elsewhere. If these problems are not fixed over time, because these problems are bad for business and a pain in the butt, trust me, I know. All right, so here I am giving you a few sites to start with. But there are tons of other sites out there, so feel free to find what booking site works best for you. So just take a screenshot of this page, and then as soon as you have time, start doing your research and choose the booking site that works best for you and your business. So now we have went over booking systems and their benefits. Now let's dive into how to price your services so you can then start logging your services and pricing lists onto these booking sites. So here we will be discussing pricing. I get asked this question all the time, how to. So I knew this would be a great topic to go over. The reason why we went into business for ourselves in the first place was to have total control over ourselves and our work hours. The struggle with majority of braiders is not knowing their worth and it shows in their pricing. So does this sound familiar? How much should I charge? When should I increase my prices? How much should I increase them by? If so, then this module is for you and will help you find the answers to those questions. There are a couple of ways to figure out pricing points for your services. Now, I cannot tell you your worth. You only know that, but I can give you guidance on finding the pricing points in your area. So, let's begin with monthly expenses. First, add up all your expenses for one month overhead, product costs, you name it. Write it down, then calculate your hours available for the month. Divide the expense by your hours. That is how much you have to generate to simply make it every month. Doubling that is the standard and not always the approach to setting your prices initially. If all the things above align, increase the doubled amount by 10 to 15%. So then you will come up with your monthly expenses and then you can start breaking down your services into a pricing point that works best for you that will help you profit from month to month. Now another way to figure out your pricing point is actually how I did it which is easier if you ask me. <laughs> so never be afraid to copy the right cat. There is nothing wrong with copying someone else's formula that is proven to be working. Copy the formula not his or her complete style word from word. Add your own flavor to the mix and voila. So this is where you start to do your research on your competition. Every city and state is different when it comes to pricing. So here's a formula that you can use that will get you going in the right direction for pricing your services. I even used this formula when I first moved to Texas and it worked. Research the competition. Start looking around Instagram for stylist braiders profile in your city or state with styles and skills set similar to yours. This is where you must be honest with yourself. Everyone always say, do not compare yourself to others. And I believe in that to a certain extent. And I say that because this is where the exception to the rule falls into place. Because for me, this is where the comparison came in to play for me when I had to start. Setting my prices. I was like lost when I was when I moved to Texas because you know everywhere is different. So I wanted to figure out what was clients really willing to pay. I knew what profiles to look at due to my skill set. I knew I could charge the same pricing points as this or that braider in my town was charging for her services because our skill set was on the same level. Now on another note, this is where I had to be honest with myself. I knew when setting my prices for my frontal sew-ins, I was not going to be able to charge what the top-rated stylist in my town on the or on the ground was charging because my skill set was not up to par just yet. So I looked around on Instagram and found a few stylists in my area whose skills matched mine. And the reason I did this is because that let me know what the clients in my area was already willing to pay for the particular service I was providing. This method also will help you figure out your worth because some of these braiders be lowballing and you will think to yourself, oh no, I am not doing all that work for chump change. This method will bring out your worth for sure. But again, this is just an outline to help you get going down the right path because again, only you know your worth. 
Now, there are two ways you can find out your competition's price list. First, you can start looking around Instagram for braiders' profiles in your city or state with a booking link somewhere on their page. Click the link and start doing your research. You can also search directly from the booking site. So here I'm just going to use Stylesheet as an example. Type in any service you like and every braider in that area that provides that service will pop up and from there start doing your research. Again, a lot of people may say, oh no, don't compare yourself to others. But sometimes comparison is not a bad thing, especially when trying to figure out your pricing point. Because me just sitting over here telling you to set your prices at whatever you want is still not helping you figure it out. And I know that saying didn't help me, but this method did. However, on another note, if you see a braider in your city lowballing to the point where you feel you refuse to be that cheap, then yes, yeah, set your prices at your worth. Okay, raise them up because we know what it takes to provide these styles. And we also know the quality of work we provide too, okay? The information above is just a guide to help you figure out your pricing points, so price them at your worth. I cannot stress that to you more. All right, so last but not least, let's dive into when is a good time to raise your prices. So here I will be giving you tips on when you can or should increase your prices and by how much to increase them by. Therefore, my motto is, Skill plus experience equal promotions. Just like the corporate world, you get promoted based on your skill and experience. The same applies in the beauty industry. Once you have mastered your craft, raise them prices. If you have been in the game more than three years, raise them prices. If you hear a lot of your clients saying, girl, your prices are too cheap, raise them prices. Just be mindful of the area you live in and what clients are willing to actually pay for services. So for example, if you are starting out and charging between 100 to 120 for medium size mid back box braids and you now have mastered your craft after six months to a year, raise your prices 20 to 25 dollars and within a year or two, slightly raise them more until you feel completely comfortable with your set pricing point. Knotless and or box braids take between three to five hours. So you should get to a point to where your set price is at least 150 to 165 for medium mid back box braids and 185 to 220 for medium size knotless box braids. Therefore, always keep in mind that once you have mastered a skill, increase your price. Example, if you are charging between 50 to $60 for five to six feet in stitch braids and you have mastered your craft, raise your prices at least 15 to $20 or more. So look at it this way. In order for you to be able to raise your prices without losing clientele, you must provide your client with better styles because there is no reason to pay more for the exact same quality of work and or experience as before. So make sure you raise your prices accordingly. And remember, the beauty industry is a billion dollar industry. So there is money out here for all of us to make a really good living being a braider. You just have to be willing to put in the work. So that wraps up module three for profile types and I will talk to you in the next module.